Some people, I have went 10 miles out of the way when a black cat ran in front of my car. That's a tradition. That's old thinking. Those are old ways. Man, I thought I wasn't going to never get back to where I needed to be. And I saw the black cat. I know that you stepped into the water and the water was cold. It chilled your body, but not your soul. And I got Jesus in my heart, but Jesus got company. Jesus got some Amorites, some, some Jezebites, and, and some Amorites, and, 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 and some Hittites, and, and some strangers in there with him. If you are straight up Jesus, we would know him. If everybody in there was straight up Jesus, and Jesus was the only thing in there, we would know him. Amen. You're not straight up Jesus, you got some of them contaminants, something that has contaminated your life. That's what you wrestle with. That's what you try to drive out so I can hold on what I need to hold on so I can maximize the potential so that I'm trying to find out what God has in store for my life. That you're going to be in a, a war zone. We talked about this on Wednesday. You're going to be in a war zone all the days of your life. Not just talking externally, uh, but when I start talking about getting a victory, you're thinking that I'm talking about the victory on the job, the victory of the enemy. Your neighbor has a dog that keeps coming over in your yard and doing foul things. I'm not talking about getting on the victory of that. The victory of a promotion on your job. Those are immaterial things compared to the fight that you have in the side. And to decide to be the highest and the best possible person that God has called you to be. God has called you to be somebody special. Even they, the enemy, that's in the inner portions of yourself. I know you, you, uh, 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 I know how to go to a restaurant and buy the finest steaks and, and then be able to pay for the ticket, but I also know how to go back to the back of the kitchen and wash the dishes and see what had happened. I have been up, I have washed cars, I have worked in different areas of different areas of my life, and I know what it is to be up and I know what it is to be down. But I'm telling you here this morning, whatever facet that, that you are in your life, whatever phase you might be up, you might be down, whatever, whatever phase or whatever level it is, there's always something consistent in your life. Every stage of life has its own hell. You're gonna deal with hell when you're up, you're going to deal with hell whether you're down. Every level of your life is going to, you're going to have to deal with it. You can't escape it. You can't get away from it. It has its own contaminants or its own things that, that keep you from doing what you need to do. It's all, it has its own storm. It has its own test. It has its own complex. I know you're sitting in the, on side of the prettiest person you ever seen, and they got all this them smelling stuff on, and they smelling pretty good, and they all sharp, and they all clean, and everything. But I tell you that beneath that makeup and that eyeshadow and all the stuff that they put on, uh, there's some kind of crazy within you. You don't have to. Uh, uh, agree to it. You can take the risk of it. You can take the risk of asking that person on side of you, what crazy do you have in you? You can take the chance of somebody slapping you and asking them that question. You know, at the risk of getting slapped, you don't want to tell, or they don't want to tell you, but I can guarantee you if you ask their spouse, they'll tell you. Ain't it funny how some can be cool, calm, and collective, 
go home and turn into the Frankenstein monster, the creature of the loop, Luzon, Freddy, Freddy Krueger, Jason on Friday the 13th. Oh my God, I would have any idea. If you have known that, you, if, if you, you're saying within yourself, if I would have known that, I never would have said it. I do. I would have said maybe, probably I would have said I won't, and then maybe I wouldn't have said nothing at all. You know why I'm looking at the crazy in somebody else, they're looking at the crazy in you. You don't know why I did this or why I did it at all. And we are all in this together. Sit down praising the Lord. Because the fight is in the inside. The struggle is in the inside. There's a tiredness to the works that sleep just won't cure. There's a struggle that sleep just won't cure. There's a bleeding inside. So when we're ready to go about to talk about the scripture that we're coming up to now, we see Joshua fighting an external battle, but our battle is on the inside. I'm not, uh, uh, so when we're ready to see Joshua, Joshua, we, 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 we deal with Joshua here in, in, in the battle of the five kings. I'm not talking about God will give you the victory <clears throat> and allow you to put your neck or your foot on your enemy's neck. I'm not talking about your mother-in-law. I'm not talking about your father-in-law. So don't go over there and try to put your mother, your foot on your mother-in-law's neck. But to put it in perspective, people need to understand the children of Israel or in a promised land under the leadership of Joshua. They have come to Macedon. The Gibeonites have already changed sides. It was six kingdoms, but right now there are five kingdoms because the Gibeonites have come to the conclusion that we can't beat you, so we're going to join you. They have heard about what happened at Ai and at Canaan, and so they are switching sides. And, 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 and now Joshua is taken on a battle of the Gibeonites <clears throat> because the other five kings are mad at them. Now they are chasing the ones that are being chased. Yeah. Now the kings are, are hidden in the cave and they are losing the battle. They hide in the cave because they are losing and, and, and they don't want them to come to them. Now, instead of them chasing the children of Israel, the children of Israel is chasing them. Isn't there something in your life that, that, that right now you got on the run? At first, it was chasing you. Now, you're chasing it. The, 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 the shepherds at Mackinac, it was an economic empire. It, 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 it was God's promised land that God had promised the Israel. The, uh, it, it, it was an economic empire. It was so important that Joshua had to win this battle or he wouldn't be able to plot for possess the land because they were shepherds. Uh, uh, they were operating on a bartering system. And we are in a society that maintained themselves through, through the food and the substance. It was on prime real estate that the enemy is standing on belonging to Joshua. Other people have taken over. When you know that you leave something, somebody else takes over. Anything that you're trying to get back, it's going to take a fight. Anything that you're trying to get back, you lost it. He's going to take a fight. The love of your child, the strength of your marriage, he's going to take a fight. You, you, you just can't wait back and say, on point, 
with your finances. 